in your interviews always ask this to your interviewer as well whether in the output having a null is okay if not what it should be replaced is otherwise you are going to get the wrong answer hey guys welcome back to our channel on this channel we try to learn various concepts of data science by practicing a lot of questions this video is in continuation of the sql 50 crack sql interview in 50 question series where we are trying to learn hands-on sql using 50 carefully curated questions covering diverse aspects of sql so we are already done with the select part as well as the basic joins now we are working on the basic aggregate functions then we'll be working on sorting and grouping then advanced select and joins sub queries and finally on advanced string functions rejects and clauses okay in our previous video we worked on this question called not boring movies where we learned three things firstly how to check for a remainder when we are dividing a number so the use of modular symbol secondly what is the best way to deal with text in sql and thirdly using the like clause to check for the similarity with a certain text in this video we are going to solve the next question called average selling price and try to learn from it so yeah let's jump right in so this is the 16th question of the series called average selling price and if i look at the companies this question has been asked in so amazon and adobe so kind of an important questions let's look at what the question has to say we are given a table called prices with four different columns product id start date end date price and their data types being integer date date and integer respectively the combined columns product id start date and end date is the primary key of for this table each row of this table contains the price of the product ID in the period from start date to end date. For each product, there will be no two overlapping periods. That means there will be no two intersecting periods for the same product. We are also given a second table called unit stole. Again, three columns, product ID, purchase date and units and their data types being integer, date and end. This table may contain duplicate rows. Each row of this table indicates the date, units and product ID of each product sold. We are asked to write a solution to find the average selling price for each product. The average price should be rounded off to two decimal places. Order of the result does not matter. Okay, let's look at the question through this example. So here we are basically having two different products and several start dates and end dates and their prices in that date range. And then we have a unit sold table where we have on on a certain date how many units were sold so for example for product id1 how can we calculate the average price so this purchase was made on 25th of february 2019 and between 17th of february 2019 and 28th of february 2019 the price was 5 so you multiply 5 to 100 units that is the total money spent is 500. Similarly, for a purchase of 15 units on 1st March 2019, the price from 1st March 2019 to 22nd March 2019 was 20. So 15 multiplied by 20, that is 300. So initially you have 100 multiplied by 5, that is 500 plus 15 multiplied by 20, that is 300. So the, in total you have spent 800 and you need to divide by the total number of units sold, that is 115. Whatever you get, that is your average price for product id1 and similarly for product id2 and that is what we have in our output yeah so basically what we need to do is since the information that we need to use to calculate this average price is basically in two different tables we need to firstly join these now we are going to learn a very new method of joining things so until now we were only using equal to sign on the on clauses but in this we need to use something else as well from this table called prices a list sp let's left join on left join the table units sold alias as u units sold alias as u on now here the first thing that we need to make sure that we are joining on the same product ids but that is not all we also need to make sure that the purchase date lies between the start date and the end date ranges because we need to use the price of that particular range to calculate the average so we do p dot product id p dot product id is equal to u dot product id and our u dot purchase date u dot purchase date is greater than equal to p dot start date and u dot purchase date is less than equal to p dot end date why we are doing this is not only we need to make sure 
that our product IDs are same. So let's go row by row. Let's look at for row number one in prices table. So here we have product ID one and product ID one is going to find that, okay, there are two rows where we have product ID one in the units table. Then it will also look at there are other two conditions where this line can be stated that start date should be less than or equal to purchase date. So is start date less than or equal to purchase date? Yes. And end date should be greater than equal to purchase date. Since all these three conditions are satisfied for row number one, then it will populate product ID one purchase date of 25 January, 25 February 2019 and 100 units after this row. But if I look at for first row and the second row in units table, we are going to see even if product ID is same and purchase date greater than the start date 17 February 2019, but purchase date is not less than the end date. And that is why this is going to be ignored in our output. Okay. So once we are performing this join, let me do a select star to keep all the columns and let me try to run this to see what happened. So let me drag it above and also on the left so that we are able to see this easily. So if we look at our output, right? So we have the four rows that we had in our prices table along with it, the product ID purchased it and the number of units. Okay. Now, once we have the prices and the units, we need to calculate the average price for every product ID. So for every product ID, we can go ahead and group by the product ID coming from the prices table. So product ID. And since we are grouping by product ID, we can make sure that we are able to return it. So select product ID. Then we need to calculate the average. Now to calculate the average, firstly, we need to get the total money spent that will be price multiplied by units and divide by the total number of units sold. So to calculate the total money spent is basically P dot price multiplied by U dot units. And if I sum this thing, because we are calculating it for every group. So sum this thing. So that is going to give you the total money spent for buying all the items that were bought for that particular product ID. And if you divide it by sum of U dollar units, that is going to give you the average. And this should be rounded to two decimal places as the question suggests and should be aliased as average price. Okay, let me go ahead and run this. Okay, so we have accepted. And if I look at our output, our output is same as expected output. Let me go ahead and submit it to pass all the test cases. Okay, so this is wrong answer still. Can you suggest why this is happening and not passing two of the test cases? Just think about it. Even though we did a left join, so that is we are going to keep every, you know, every product ID from the prices table. So we are also, uh, we are going to have one, two and three, even though if we look at in our unit sold, we do not have three, right? But the problem is since we do not have three here, all the columns coming from unit sold are going to have null, null and null values. Now, when you multiply the price to calculate this, right? The numerator multiply the price 30 into null that is going to give you null. And then you are dividing by sum of null as well. So in the output, we are going to get null, but it should get zero. Although this question has not explicitly mentioned that. So this is their fault as well. So in your interviews, always ask this to your interviewer as well, whether in the output having a null is okay. If not, what it should be replaced is otherwise you are going to get the wrong answer. Okay. So it is very simple fix. We learned about this as well that, okay, after calculating this average and rounding off to two decimal places, if this is still null, right? If any value is still null, you just replace it by zero. So how can we do that? We can simply go ahead and do if null. So if this entire thing still comes out to be null, just replace it with zero. Let me go ahead and run this again. So again, accepted our output same as expected, but let me go ahead and submit it to see if it passes all the test cases or not. So you see now this is accepted. So yeah, this is how we do it. 
even though it says easy question but i don't think it is that easy we need to be you know thorough with our concept of left join as well as using the on clauses effectively then we also need to make sure that we do not use directly avg aggregate function we need to manually calculate that average using the sum function then round it off then also make need to make sure that if it is still comes out to be null replace it by zero so yeah, this is how we do it let me know if there is a better way or more efficient way to solve this question let the solution be in the comment section below and i'll see you guys in the next video